Dear Spanish ladies, farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. For we received orders to sail for New England. And never more shall we see you again. Alright folks, we are fishing the Clash One and Top competition festival this weekend. I'm not really sure what it's titled, but we're doing that. So uh, we thought we'd make a wee video about it. And uh, aye, it's Friday the now, we're just out catching bait. We've caught some mackerel, some launts. And I think it's a heron, but it could be a shad. I don't really know, but we've got one of them as well. So we've got plenty of bait and uh, hopefully we'll catch something a bit bigger tomorrow. I'm just trying to stop Mick running the ground while Rod brings back the trailer. Oh, that way you big bugger. Right, anyway, um, yeah, we'll check in later on. This can be the best fish I catch all weekend. Smile. Huh? Smile with your trophy. <laughs> that is my PB wants. <laughs> I want a nice photo. <laughs> After catching some bait, we set up our tent at the New England Bay campsite. I might have forgotten my sleeping bag. And then headed to the clash for some dinner and a pint before the skipper's meeting. <laughs> Oh no! The grumpy neck! <laughs> That's not right! <laughs> The rules were as follows. Life jackets had to be worn at all times. Only one rod per angler, regardless of how many anglers were on the boat. Spare rods must be clip only and have no terminal gear. And this was of course a catch and release competition. And so the scoring was to be done via an app. You simply had to take two photos per fish. One on the measure and one with the number tag and the angler who caught it. And log your catches onto the app throughout the day. And finally, participants not attending the prize giving would be omitted from the results. Which is a cool rule, because events like these are all about community. And even if you didn't catch a qualifying fish, it's just good manners to attend until the very end. With everyone clued up on the rules from the night before, it was time to get the boats in the water and kickstart day one of the competition. But um, we didn't film that because Rodney forgot his sunglasses. And while they were doing the whole on your marks, get ready, go bit, uh, I was running up the beach in my waders to go and fetch them out the truck for him. The boat envy is real. <laughs> yeah, got it bad. Catch of the day. <laughs> On the board, baby! Right. Right? Yeah, release him. How'd you feel about your record catch? <laughs> I'm ecstatic. <laughs> you had a bigger one in a minute. He then proceeded to catch a smaller one. But shortly after, he pulled in the stunning battle scarred female bullhus, who measured in at 98 centimetres. So far, everything had been caught by Rod, which was weird, because sea life usually tends to avoid Rodney. He was feeling quite chuffed with himself, but unfortunately, I had to burst his bubble. I'd hooked a tope, the first for us in the competition. I know I probably look pretty awkward fighting it here. We've kind of established that I might need a left-handed reel, because I'm so much more comfortable using my right hand to pull. But anyway, despite looking a bit arse backward in the process, we got her into the boat. She was a nice wee female measuring in 130 odd centimetres. 
Like most shark species, tote populations are threatened and we're lucky to have the numbers that we do here in Scotland. They need to be handled with care and released safely back to the sea. After all, the species is older than our own. They deserve to be treated with respect. On my very next drop, I caught a 100cm bullhus and emasculated Rodney just a wee bit more. My bullhus was bigger than Rodney's bullhus. Despite physically catching a tope and seeing one follow up a dogfish that we reeled in, Rod decided there was no tope here and we'd cross over the bay and try a place where we'd caught some big girls a week or so prior. This was a mistake and in the final three hours of day one we caught an out but a tiny wee bullhus. But hey, we had a good laugh about it, or at least I did. So now we're uh, sitting in a big semicircle of boats because Rodney's a sheep. Meh. What was the thinking behind your plan here, Rodney? Was it just follow the crowd or was it grass is greener? The grass is greener. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what? Pardon? Go away. We finished day one in 14th place and after a few drinks and a good meal at the clash, it was time to head to bed and dream sweet topi dreams. It's day two of the Clash Tope competition. We're currently languishing in 14th position. So we better pull our socks up today. So it's day two of the competition and it's a lot windier today than it was yesterday. But it's less windy than it was forecasted to be and it's certainly less rainy than it was forecasted to be. So it could turn out to be quite a good day's fishing or at least a bearable day's fishing. But um, yeah, turns out we're not actually starting till nine today, but we didn't get that memo. So we got up at quarter to six and we are here two hours early. So we're just killing some time in it. We weren't the only ones who didn't get the memo. But it wasn't all bad. It gave us more time to get the crack with the other members of the Clash One and Breakfast Club and gawk at the Suzuki fishing team boats, because they are bougie. We were only at our first mark of the day for about 40 minutes before I got our first bite. It's really live, the dogfish. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big dogfish. <laughs> it's, a big dog. it's not a big dog, it's a big dogfish. Oh, now for context, I thought this bite was a dogfish. It was small and repetitive and it didn't run. It reeled in easy until it was about halfway up and then it woke up. And it became quite clear, quite quickly, that this was near dogfish. But if it was, it would have been a record. This tope reached the 161 centimetre mark, the same length as the one that was at the top of the scoreboard yesterday. And funnily enough, it was a male. 
The females tend to be the bigger ones, but this fella was a long boy. He was skinny and lacking the chonk of a lady shark, but thankfully, in this scenario, length was better than girth. Good boy! Go on! Beautiful! They're so cool. It was a really big dogfish though, wasn't it? <laughs> and it's a male one. All these guys this morning, like, you should go catch a big female one. <laughs> That was a really big tube. That was one six one centimeters, which we'll put us in joint first. <laughs> you can catch fish. <laughs> Let's need a woman on your boat. Anyone who says women are bad luck at sea can Probably. suck my. Rod then caught the wee bull husk that had been pestering his bait. Not much more happened after that at this mark, so we headed further out to sea to play with the big boats, and Rod finally caught his first hope of the competition. I also caught one at this mark, just a wee 133 centimetre one, but a cutie nonetheless. So far today, Charlie caught a tope that was equal with yesterday's first place. We caught a decent bull pass. We caught another tope that was 133. I caught a tope that was 154, which would have been top few yesterday as well. So. I don't know. There's a total length prize to this one. Yep. I would imagine some other boats will have had more tow because they've got four or five people on some of the boats. So. Um, yeah, it's quite quiet. We're going to go and try for some puss in a minute, aren't we? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. At the final mark, we caught three bullhus between us, one straight after the other. And then things went quiet until Rod hooked another tope. When you grab it, just grab it and be definite about it. Never really came to you grab it, so. You really need to grab a leader so you've got the control of it to keep its head up. Soon after we got him back into the water, I hooked into a tope. We'd likely hit a pack of small males, but with a 45 minute trip to get back to the beach and the end time of the competition looming, we realistically only had about 10 minutes of fishing time left, and that was pushing it. Just as I got mine to the surface, it snapped off. Rod then struck into one, but he also snapped off. A pretty clear sign from the gods to pack it in and head back to the beach. Thank you very much.
thanks for coming. Everyone, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday was touch and go with the weather. I was this year myself, lots of people were asking me, and I never had an answer to give these. Uh, guys like Antoine and stuff come up for Leeds and all the rest of it, guys from Wales, Liverpool, Cameron Deans from Peterhead. So I really appreciate that, and I want to make the effort. Thank you. Uh, and Rab came for Dramore as well. Where's Rab? Recorded fish, we recorded 234 fish. Uh, 161 top, 27 rays, and 46 bullhus. So the, uh, the average length of these fish was 117 centimetres. So over the metre is good. So 234 fish, of which 161 are top. So that's a fantastic result for, for 29 boats fishing. Well done guys, well done. It's a pleasure to be back here uh, for the second year running um, with the with the Sea Angling Classic and so there'll be somebody or somebody's that are going to be coming down to the Sea Angling Classic in, uh, in Portsmouth um, to compete for the, the top prizes this year. But if I can just take uh, just take a couple of minutes um, of, of your time, uh, we built up the Sea Angling Classic. Honesty, integrity, and pride are core values that we have had at Angling Spirit and all the companies we uh, have worked with with our events over many years. Currently, one of the positions I hold, I'm the vice president of EFTA. Um, EFTA stands for, for the European Fishing Tackle Trade Association. And the purpose of EFTA is to lobby uh, in Brussels for recreational angling, the thing that we all love to do, to make sure that we can actually do and continue to do this going forward. We were successful um, in stopping the ban of uh, monofish, monofilament fishing line uh, and braid, uh, which were being considered as single-use plastics. The same as knives and forks. Um, that, that, that have been that been stopped. So, can you imagine what could have happened for and with the trade and for fishing generally if you couldn't have used monofilament fishing line or indeed braid? That's what we've done, and that's that's part of the role that uh, that we've got within what we're doing in EFTA. So, the Sea Angling Classic is is. We've got some exciting things uh, that, that are going on. It's about building something for the future. It's linking in the environment, sustainability, and, and all the different things that are linked to that to enable us to, to continue and actually help grow recreational angling with juniors going forward. But um, it's it's really important to be here and, and see Elvin and, and, and the great juniors, junior anglers coming forward. Um, because without them, the next generation, that's it. It stops there. But anyway, without further ado, uh, I'm going to hand back to, to, to David, who's done a fantastic job uh, with him and his team here. Uh, again, staging what is going to be a, a fantastic uh, result of the tournament, um, but uh, a, a brilliant tournament over the last two days. So, David, if you, you can come back and... Uh, and get ready to present these great prizes from the great sponsors and partners we've had. We'll start with the, the Ray and the Hoss, and then we'll run up from 10 to 1. Okay, the longest Thornback Ray goes to Nick Chandler. The biggest bull Hoss is caught by Alicia. Unfortunately, one of the guys decided to leave. So he's now, he was in that one to 10. So he's pushed 11 up to 10, all right? In 10th place is Ricky on the Maggie. 9th <laughs> place, Stuart Atkinson. Ak 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 Seventh place, 
Team Hawkeye, 220 pounds. Fifth place, Team Made to Modify, 250 pounds. Fourth place, 300 pound Grumpy Mac. As Ross said this morning, first position, two places for the Classics, second position, one place for the Classics, third position, one place for the Classics. So, Colin and, no, not tenth, Ricky, come on. <laughs> Uh, Colin and Albert is a one one place in the classics. Well done. Yeah. On that subject, okay? Yeah. Ross has kindly given us the places to distribute his prizes for the classics. We cannot leave here tonight and redeem it against cash or change it to your mates or whatever. So that it goes to the people who it goes to. If they don't want it, it goes down tonight. But we can't name change it next week. So if the second place and the first place can't make it, we need to put it down the table. Does everyone agree with that? Yes? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well done, Alma. Well done, Colin. Second place, a £600, a place at the Classics and Taco. Danny Fash. Boss, <laughs> please. £750. A weekend caravan at Glashwani. <laughs> and Taco. And two tickets for, for the CNB Classics. The winning team is Squidward Free. <laughs> A huge thank you to the organisers, the tractor drivers and all the staff at The Clash. The competition was so well organised and we really had a great time. A huge congratulations to the team of the Squidward 3 for catching a 170cm male taupe. An absolute cracker of a beastie. And congratulations to all the other teams who placed and took part. You are all such good crack. Oh, and a final big thank you to the absolute dude on the mic who did a fantastic job announcing the prizes and doing the countdowns on the radio. What a weekend. I can't wait till next year's.